Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me in this virtual session, Scaling Vanta's engineering team with Codespaces. I'm Robbie Ostro. These days, I manage the platform engineering team at Vanta, where we're trying to make internet security less hard. Since I've been at Vanta, we've grown from three to 330 people, which means that we're constantly looking for tools that can grow with us without catastrophically breaking or requiring constant maintenance. Getting the right tools to set up our developers for success is probably the most important thing we can do to ensure we can continue to ship great features quickly. Today's session is going to cover what we look for in a developer environment and how we've been using code spaces to meet those needs. Every single one of our developers relies on code spaces today for every line of code they contribute to Vanta. Before I shill too much for code spaces though, let's take a quick tour of the history of Vanta's developer environment which I'm going to guess matches that of a great many of you in the audience who have scaled a startup from zero to one. Phase one, you're developing on your laptop, you're just messing around with an MVP and you can't justify the overhead of a whole development environment. After all, everyone has basically the same context and can debug everything. Phase two, you've started to hire and still haven't invested in a ton of developer tooling, but you have a collection of scripts that generally work to do some common actions. Maybe they're even consolidated in a make file. By now, you've upgraded some machines in the cloud because A, you figured out you should be developing on Linux, not your fancy new MacBook, and B, you need a little more firepower because you decided your tiny startup needed to run Kubernetes. Phase three, it's becoming clear that new developers are struggling to uncover all of the tips and tricks that you've gathered over the years, despite your best attempts at documentation. It's time to build a bunch of internal tooling to abstract away the complexity of setting up and maintaining a full-fledged development environment. And finally, phase four, you realize that there must be a better way. Vanta isn't a developer tools company. We're a security company. We should be focusing on our comparative advantage and outsourcing the complexities of managing developer machines to software much more battle-tested than our brittle set of scripts that we maintain on a part-time basis. Going through these four phases at Vanta over the course of about three years, we learned a lot of lessons about what we want our steady state to look like. We discovered that any effective modern developer environment must be fast, it must be ephemeral, and it must be standardized. Let's start with what it means to have a fast dev experience. First of all, developer machines must be fast to spin up. We don't want an engineer to waste the first half hour of every day provisioning a new machine, and definitely don't want a new hire to be discouraged when it takes them an entire day to set up their machine for the first time. We want dev machines with all of our services available in under five minutes, even though we have dozens of microservices to build that together take over an hour to set up. So we're left with a pretty fundamental issue. We want developers to be making progress on the order of minutes, but getting from Git clone to a working developer environment takes about an hour, even on a powerful machine. When Codespaces released the pre-builds alpha, we realized that it might be the solution to our problems. Of course, it was an alpha, so it did come with some of its own problems. But we got the feature working in under a day after trying to optimize our own builds for months. We can also trigger pre-builds on demand when we have a cache-busting change on main. These pre-builds are shared across every developer who might want to spin up a Codespace later that day. Even though building everything from scratch takes about an hour, Getting a new machine from a pre-build takes only a minute before you can log in and see Vanta running on localhost 8080. If you're restarting a code space that you've previously stopped, it's on the order of seconds. And if you're connecting to a code space that's already running, closer to a single second. The number on the far left here doesn't really matter since a robot is doing the waiting for us. It's hard to overestimate the impact of a new developer getting fully set up on their dev machine in a single minute instead of wasting their whole first day at work. To spin up a code space, a developer just has to run GitHub code space create or click the button in the console. These code spaces are fully fledged servers that can be SSH'd into, profiled, messed about with, and have arbitrary software installed. This video is showing me creating a code space and connecting to it for the first time. This is the slowest part of the workflow, but it still completes in well under a minute. You probably noticed that I have multiple code spaces running. There's no reason to do all your work on one. We're not prescriptive about the workflow here but most people have a code space per feature branch. This seems expensive, but since code spaces shut themselves off when they're idle, it's no big deal. In fact, even though code spaces are more expensive per hour than the corresponding machines on AWS or GCP, 
we found that our month over month costs are flat or even lower because machines aren't running when people are asleep or in a long set of meetings. The key thing to notice in this video is that when I list the running services on a brand new code space, we already have a bunch of microservices running. Any developer can run an arbitrary set of services, of course, but we found that setting up engineers with a default minimal set is a key way to make them feel confident about their developer environments and not disrupt their flow. Not only is it important to us that these machines are fast to spin up, they also have to be fast to develop within. We have a pretty massive TypeScript code base at Vanta that can make the TypeScript language server really sad. We also love our lint rules and code generation, which slow down development if not configured correctly. Luckily, CodeSpaces supports big machines that allow us to develop effectively. And remember, most important stuff is already cached, so developers can rebuild or navigate our code base with ease. Every minute that a developer is waiting for their code to type check or for their editor to autocomplete is a minute they could be doing something more effective. So fast is important for us. Wanting fast dev machines is table stakes, obvious and non-controversial. Dev machine ephemerality as a virtue might be a more interesting point. Let's start with an axiom. Dev machine divergence is evil. Different people with different setups are just impossible to debug, monitor, or write effective tooling for. Let's take a quick example of something we do all the time. Upgrade some software for all of our developers. NPM is a classic example because developers on different versions of NPM are liable to commit different package.json's, causing lots of pain. With long-lived dev machines, this is a painful, multi-step process that requires lots of herding cats, since we can't go in and make arbitrary changes to those machines that have been carefully cultivated for weeks or even months. But if we don't allow this month's long cultivation, which necessarily leads to divergence, we don't have to worry about the cat herding and instead can update across all environments by updating the pre-build config in one place and telling everybody to grab a new code space. You may be thinking that we're damaging the developer experience by not allowing this careful cultivation. Not so. We found that with the exception of maintaining command history, which we've built some tooling for, this forces developers to actually interrogate why their machines needed to be in such weird states to begin with and encourage them to build tooling so the whole team can benefit from their interesting hacks. All developers also have a recent snapshot of our entire staging environment so they don't ever have to worry about running migrations locally. This ephemerality has allowed us to tell developers at Vanta that we only support code spaces that are up to seven days old. We no longer have to worry about backwards compatibility or ensuring that we aren't breaking old workflows. The latest workflow is the only workflow. Our platform team is tiny and it has a ton of responsibilities beyond maintaining the developer environment. So, Reducing our support burden here is critical to being an effective team. This goal of ephemeral dev machines is really in service of standardization across all of our developers. Now, what does standardization actually get us besides easier debuggability? We found that standardization in the right places eliminates whole classes of questions. We've set these code spaces up such that port forwarding always works. ESLint always has enough memory. The amount of documentation that has become defunct because of this standardization is mind boggling since we just don't get these why is this thing broken questions anymore. Standardization is great, but we have highly paid software engineers who depend on their favorite tools to perform their craft. I myself will absolutely refuse to work if a cow does not tell me a fortune every time I open up a new console. So of course, we encourage people to bring their dot files. Codespace's first party support for pre-builds and for dot files is the perfect combination allowing us to ensure the core developer experience always works for everyone, but allowing developers to install the tools and customizations they need on top. All this together, and a lot more that I don't have time to cover today, meant that the whole Vanta engineering team was thrilled to move from ad hoc dev machines on AWS to Codespaces. We started considering the migration of January of this year, moved everybody in February, and have been happy ever since. And in the rare times we weren't happy, the Codespaces team has been an incredible resource. The migration was a surprisingly painless experience. And while it did require a few extra pings to some stragglers, it honestly wasn't much harder than the migrations we had been doing constantly just to get people's long-lived dev machines in the same state. I'll leave you with four final tips. First, use pre-builds to do as much work as possible. Computers are cheaper than people, but make sure you monitor when those builds fail and fix them immediately. 
These cached builds are only useful if they're relatively recent. This is one of the core responsibilities of our on-call engineer. Second, encourage your team to use short-lived code spaces because dev machine divergence is the devil. Third, codify necessary developer workflows and settings in your shared config. This will eliminate an entire class of bugs. And finally, check out other features of code spaces. We love using code spaces as shared preview environments, using public URLs, and configuring code spaces to sign commits for us. There's also an incredibly tight integration with VS Code that all of our developers use. It seems like the editor wars are finally over. There's a lot to discover outside the broad strokes in this talk. Thanks so much for coming. You can find Vanta on the internet at vanta.com. And if you want to reach out to me, I'm Robbie Ostro, and you can find me on GitHub at Ostroar.